When you think about a truly captivating intellectual woman, yes, some people might just have, you know, innate higher intelligence and that's lovely, but it's more so the daily routines and mindsets that set them apart and truly make them an intellectual. So no more brain rot happening around here. Let's talk about how to be an intellectual woman. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. And in case you want more from me besides just my YouTube videos, don't forget to check out my Awaken Your Feminine Energy course or any of my other digital products like my Notion template, my workbooks, etc. And they are all linked down below. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the seven habits that intellectual women have or just intellectual people and how you can start incorporating these into your life because being more intellectual, it makes life more interesting. It makes you wittier and more charismatic. You can talk to people easier and it can help you feel more confident. So let's get into it. Okay, so this one is probably the most obvious one but also one of the most important ones and that is reading, actually picking up a book and reading. 99.7% of smart, successful people have a few things in common, but one of them is that they still read. It doesn't even matter what type of book you're reading, really. It could be self-development books, books on money, books that are memoirs of really interesting people, history books, nutrition books, business books, or even fantasy nonfiction books. Reading expands your brain, your knowledge. It makes you smarter. And this is the case even if you're reading fiction books. Like it doesn't just have to be like education educational nonfiction type of reading. Reading can make you more articulate and help with your language and teach you how to focus without all of that extra stimulation. And if you're specifically reading more fiction, that can help teach you more empathy and creativity. And those are not useless skills. Like learning to strengthen your creativity muscle, I always used to see it as something that like wasn't very important, but it really does make you smarter because it helps you problem solve. It helps you think things through differently. I know some people think that like like reading a book and watching a movie on the same topic are like basically the same thing, but it's not. When you read a book, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you have to use your imagination. You have to think for yourself. You have to set the scene in your head and imagine the character they're talking about and the way they're describing their hair. When you watch a TV show or a movie, you're not imagining anything. All of that work is done for you. It's entirely passive. And it may sound like a small thing, but having to subtly flex that focus and imagine muscle, it really does make you smarter. If you want to get more into reading, I highly, highly recommend that you first start by reading books that truly pique your interest. You don't have to read John Steinbeck, even though so many people love him, if you just feel so naturally drawn to learning more about health and longevity. You don't have to read that super famous book on money if you feel so drawn to picking up and reading that book on astrology. Reading will be a whole lot more enjoyable and it'll be so much easier to make it a habit when you read a book that actually interests you. Your curiosity is not random and it will lead you to what you need. Okay, so moving on, I want you to think back to your childhood. Something that was a core part of childhood and what made it so interesting, I think, is that we were always learning something new. First, we were in school all the time, right? So we were learning new things there every day. But also we learned how to ride a bike. We learned how to take care of the family dog. We learned how to use the computer. We learned how to interact with different types of people. We learned how to play soccer or do ballet. We learned how to drive. When we were younger, we were always learning. Sometimes it was things that we really wanted to learn, like how to set up our first social media page and other things that we didn't really want to learn, like grammar and how to do our own laundry. But regardless, we were always learning because the world was new to us. And then we become an adult and that kind of slows down. Like we're not really forced to learn new things anymore. But the most intelligent, interesting people continue to always be learning. And if you want to be an intellectual woman, then you need to keep learning too. Now, obviously you can learn by reading books, which we already talked about, but there are so many different ways to keep learning. We can learn basically anything educational from books, podcasts, courses, documentaries, even YouTube videos. We can learn new hobbies or sports like tennis or golf or dancing. We can learn new languages. We can learn cool, fancy new ways to bake or how to make homemade Italian pasta. We can learn how to invest in the stock market. Once your desire and your pursuit of learning new things ends, 
your life starts to become dull and you start to become dull. Something that holds people back from putting themselves out there more and trying new things and learning new things is that oftentimes, just because something is unfamiliar, we assume that it must be hard. Like for example, when I started my YouTube channel and I had to learn all about like equipment and cameras and editing and all of that kind of stuff, I remember thinking like, ugh, all this stuff is so hard. And I remember I put off starting my YouTube channel for several months because of that. When really all of this stuff, it wasn't hard, it was just new. It was just unfamiliar. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily easy, but it's not hard. Many people overestimate the difficulty of things because we just automatically equate something being unfamiliar to us as something being challenging or hard. But don't let that scare you from trying new things. An intellectual woman is not afraid to learn new things and feel dumb in the process of that. When we learn new things, that'll usually make us feel dumb, but we're actually getting smarter. Something that I personally want to learn more about is writing. When I was younger, I used to love writing. Like I loved it. And I kind of want to like bring out that side of me again, because I really do deeply believe that the passions we had when we were young were there for a reason and are a guide for us. And I think learning to write better will also help me to potentially make better YouTube videos or maybe help me to write a book one day. Who knows? So right now I'm taking a writing class on Skillshare who is kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online community for creatives. They have thousands of different classes across so many different categories. They have classes on design, film, illustration, productivity. They have so many different amazing classes on how to turn your passion into a business but they also have different classes on more lifestyle related things too, like sewing, painting, jewelry making, cooking, and a whole lot more. One thing that's super cool about Skillshare is that they have something called Learning Pass, which are curated sequential classes that are meant to help you master a specific skill or competency. I'm really loving the writing class I'm taking right now. It's taught by Milo Goldberg, who is a best-selling author, but I've loved all the classes on there. Skillshare is actually how I originally learned how to use Notion, which if you guys have been around here for a while, you know that I love Notion and it's how I organize my whole life. So it's been super helpful for me. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you've got nothing to lose. Definitely take advantage of that and get started on Skillshare today. You know, it's summer right now. Some of us have some more free time, so it's the perfect time to do it. Now, the next habit to be more of an intellectual woman is to stop being chronically online. Although there can be so much valuable good education online, like totally, there's no doubt about that. When you are just chronically online, like you know what I mean, like always scrolling, always consuming, you will start to feel what's best described as brain rot. A lot of people use this term brain rot when it comes to like scrolling TikTok videos. But when you are just chronically online, you will start to feel dumb. You will start to feel dull. You will become a different, usually less intelligent version of yourself. If you think of like a really smart, captivating, intellectual woman, you just cannot imagine them scrolling on the internet, scrolling on TikTok for hours and hours because you just can't, like they just don't do that. Go talk to people in real life. Don't just send memes back and forth through Instagram or just hide out in the comments section on TikTok all day. Like go be a part of real life. Again, there can be so much value on the internet. Like I have learned so much from the internet and social media, but there can be a point where it goes too far. And once it goes into like overconsumption territory, that is when the brain rot starts happening. It will literally start changing the chemistry of your brain. So be careful of that. Now, next, if you want to be an intellectual woman, you have to allow yourself to get out of your own little bubble. Getting out of your bubble and experiencing new things is how you grow and learn and open up your mind to new things, new concepts, new ways of understanding the world. Our bubbles are our comfort zones and getting out of our comfort zones, even just a little bit, will help us see the world differently and open up our brains to whatever else is out there. When you never leave your own little bubble, AKA you've never really left the city that you were born in and grew up in, you've never really made any new friends since the ones that you've made in elementary school, and you always only ever go to that one little restaurant that has the soup that you like, then that is all you will ever know. It's not that you're not smart or not intelligent or not an intellectual. It's just that your intellectual capacity is limited because you will only ever know what you expose yourself to. And the more that you expose yourself to, the more that your brain will expand. So how do you get out of your bubble? There's obviously the big things like traveling and seeing new cultures, but 
that usually is time consuming. It's usually a little bit more expensive. We don't always have the vacation days for that. Like that's not really a part of our daily life for most people, but we can get out of our own little bubble in our daily everyday simple life by talking to new people that we've never talked to before. We can go try that cool looking workout studio that we've never been to or try a completely different workout that we've never done before. We can strike up a conversation with our waiter or our Uber driver. We can go see a show that we would have normally never thought to go to. You can work from a new coffee shop this time. You can listen to a podcast on a topic that you've never really thought much about before. On your lunch break at work, you can sit with that coworker that you don't really know that well. We don't just break out of our own bubble by quitting our job moving halfway across the world and learning a new language. It can also be done through the little choices and the little things that we do every day. To expand your mind, you need to expand your comfort zone. Intellectual people also have another thing in common. They have a genuine curiosity for life. There's nothing more powerful for expanding your mind and becoming a smarter person than allowing yourself to be genuinely curious about things and asking questions. Asking questions is how we learn, it's how we grow. Most intellectual people are just ordinary people with a curious mind. They have an excitement for learning new information and diving in deeper and asking one of the most powerful questions there is, why? I remember when I was younger, like a kid, I heard this, how smart people are just curious people. And I remember thinking to myself, I was like, oh, well, I don't feel like I'm very curious. Like I never really felt like I was a very curious person. And now being older and feeling very curious about stuff now, I realized that I was just told to be curious about certain things. And those certain things didn't intrigue me that much. When I was younger, I was curious about the inner workings of the mind and energy and even spirituality a little bit. I was curious about animals. I was curious about photography and videography. I was curious about writing. I was curious about organization and habits. I was curious about people. I wasn't as curious about algebra or history or the nucleus of a cell. What I'm trying to say is that you might not think you're a curious person simply because you're limiting your view of what you think you should be curious about. As I already said, your curiosity is not random. Dive into it, follow it. It's a guide. It is your intuition pulling you to something deeper and it's there for a reason. And once you start allowing your curiosity to lead you and guide you in your life, it all just opens up and expands from there. That curiosity starts to become a habit and that curiosity starts to flow to other areas of your life. I feel like I became more of an intellectual woman when I dove into the topics that I was genuinely curious about and genuinely interested in. I started asking questions on those things. I started reading books and listening to podcasts and learning. And most importantly, I got into the habit of asking questions, the habit of curiosity. And that habit started expanding to other areas of my life. And I feel like, personal opinion obviously, I feel like I got smarter and developed a much more expanded mind because of it. And that leads me to my next point though, intellectual people also have an open mind. Yes, they're curious and can ask questions like we talked about, but they can also listen to another person's point of view. They're open to new concepts. They're open to trying things differently and they're able to question themselves. They can question their own thoughts. They can question their own beliefs and their own values and smart people can change their mind about things. Exploring your beliefs, being curious, asking questions, these things will either strengthen the beliefs that you already have have and help you feel rock solid in them and confident in who you are, or it'll help you to find new ones, better ones that are more aligned with you. It is okay to question the way that you think and being open-minded can help you expand your mind. Yes, but it can also open you up to a better life. When you're open-minded, you open yourself up to new information and new opportunities that might help you. When you're open-minded, you open yourself up to potential blessings that you would have initially not even considered. When you're open-minded, you're able to connect with people better and form deeper relationships. When you're open-minded, it's much easier to turn failure or hard moments in life into lessons or opportunities for growth. When you're open-minded, it's easier to break through your limiting beliefs. When you're open-minded, you're more likely to be just the right amount of delusional to attract and create the life that you want. So embracing open-mindedness is not just about intellectual growth. It's also about creating a fulfilling life. And lastly, women who are intellectual or even just women who are like perceived as more intelligent also possess self-awareness and emotional intelligence. It's not just about having a high IQ, it's also about mastering your emotions too and being able to handle yourself and carry yourself well wherever you go. And that is why for this habit, you should go check out this video 
video how to master your emotions so that you can really understand yourself, be less reactive, and so that you can be the one in the driver's seat of your life. This video will teach you how to master your emotions, how to work past your triggers and be less reactive, and how to practice healthy detachment. So I really think you'll get a lot of value from it and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, bye.